Today we're going to be talking about alcohol. We're going to be talking about it in terms of fat loss, in terms of muscle gaining. Can you incorporate it into your fitness journey? We're going to be talking about how it is processed in the body. We're also going to be talking about some tips to avoid any damage or as much damage as possible if you are going to be incorporating it into your fitness journey. So that kind of gives things away that yes, you can incorporate alcohol, but it's very important to remember that there's a spectrum. You know, if you're only having a few drinks every two weeks or so, that's going to have a very, very minimal effect. But if you are drinking heavily, you know, three, four, five times a week, there's going to be a huge impact. And there are just some considerations to take into account if you are going to be incorporating alcohol into your fitness journey. So first thing we're going to chat through are calories and alcohol. So yes, there are calories in alcohol. Alcohol is actually the fourth macronutrient. So obviously we have protein, carbs and fat, which are our three main macronutrients but alcohol is actually classified as the fourth macronutrient. So in protein, we know that there's four calories per gram, carbs, four calories per gram, fats, nine calories per gram, and in alcohol, there are seven calories per gram. So as you can see here, I've put together a little list of a few examples of calories in some common drinks. So in the likes of a pint of Guinness, there's gonna be in and around 200 to 210 calories, a glass of white wine, 175 calories, again, obviously being based on the size of glass of wine you're having. Cocktails, they can range from anything from 200 to 250 calories. They are going to be a lot more dense in calories due to the sugar, you know, the syrup in them. And then clear spirits and diet mixers are going to range between 100 to 120 calories per drink. Again, obviously, this is going to depend on the size of drink you're having. So obviously, there's going to be a big difference between a single and a double if you're having a single gin and slim line tonic versus a double gin and slim line tonic. But the drink that I would recommend most people if you are in a calorie deficit, trying to adhere to a calorie deficit consistently would be a vodka soda and fresh lime origin and slim line tonic because they are going to be the lowest in calories so those would be your best bet so we know now that alcohol has calories but it's really important to remember that these are going to be empty calories so the term empty calories meaning that there's no nutritional value in alcohol so you're not getting any nutrients nothing that's going to benefit your body really Alcohol metabolism, so how our body processes alcohol. Alcohol is metabolized in the body very differently to the other macronutrients such as protein, carbs, and fats. Alcohol is a toxin, so our body treats alcohol as a poison. When we ingest alcohol, it is the number one nutrient that your body wants to break down and essentially get rid of because your body treats it like a poison, basically. So it takes all of its energy to break down this alcohol and get rid of it. So that means that if you are eating around the time that you're drinking, your body is not going to digest the food that you're eating until it's got rid of all of this alcohol. So this can play a big part. So if you are going over your calories and into a calorie surplus around when you're drinking, this can lead to fat gain because your body is putting so much effort into getting rid of this alcohol. But very important to note that this is only going to happen if you are in a calorie surplus over the week. If you are still in a calorie deficit on average over the week and you've had some alcohol, there's absolutely no problem there because you are still in a consistent deficit. So the effect of alcohol on fat loss, you can still include alcohol into your diet when you are focusing on fat loss in moderation. The impact is gonna be based on how much you are drinking. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you're going out three, four, five times a week, it is gonna have a massive impact on your fat loss mostly to do with the amount of calories you're consuming from your alcohol it's very easy to go on a night out and rake up a thousand plus calories just from alcohol alone another thing to note that the calories in alcohol are not satiating they are not going to keep you feeling full most likely they're going to make you feel more hungry and more empty so again alcohol is potentially going to increase your appetite and most importantly it's going to lower your inhibition so you're probably not going to make the same choices that you would make if you hadn't have had a few drinks so even eating things that you wouldn't usually eat, eating amounts of food that you wouldn't usually eat, which again is going to have a big impact on your progress with your fat loss. Poor sleep, this is obviously a big factor. If you are drinking, you're not going to get good quality sleep. Although you may be hitting the pillow and going straight to sleep when you get back from a night out, your quality of sleep is going to be really interrupted from the alcohol, so you're not going to be getting that quality sleep that you need. Another big one is reduced movement the next day. When you're hungover, all you want to do is sit on the couch. You're not going to be training. If you do go training it's probably not going to be a great session you may not get out for your steps you may just simply move less throughout the day which again is going to have an impact on your fat loss if this is a regular occurrence effect on muscle building so two big things here it impacts recovery obviously like we've talked about sleep you're not getting that quality sleep you're going to be fatigued especially when you're hungover and I know myself it does take me a few days to fully recover from a night out so if you're feeling fatigued you're not going to be training optimally or you're going to be not training at all so 
you're obviously not going to be getting the stimulus that you need for your body to build that muscle mass. So finally, some tips to avoid the damage. If you are incorporating alcohol, like I mentioned, you can incorporate it in moderation and if you are being mindful of what you're doing. So your choice of drinks. If you are someone who likes cocktails, who likes pints, that is completely fine, but there are better choices that you can make to make it easier for you to adhere to your calorie deficit if you're focusing on fat loss. So going for things such as a clear spirit and a diet mixer, like we already mentioned, that's gonna be a lot more in line with your goals. Track your drinks, even tracking your drinks ahead of time through my fitness pal if you were tracking. So putting in roughly the amount of drinks that you think you're gonna have on the night out so that you know in your head, okay, this is accounted for, I know kind of what to expect and you can adjust your nutrition around this. Stay hydrated. If you can have a glass of water in between your drinks on a night out or whenever you're drinking, that's gonna be really beneficial for you, probably slow you down and just keep you feeling hydrated. Another big one is have non-negotiables the day that you are going drinking. So prioritize your protein intake earlier in the day so that you don't have to worry about it. Increase your step count. So potentially add 2000 steps to your normal step goal on that day and then get your training done ahead of time so that you're not having to worry about training on the day that you're a little bit hungover, a little bit fatigued, so that you have that out of the way and dusted. The next day, so if you are feeling a little bit hungover or if you just have been drinking in general, really focusing on rehydrating, so plenty of fluids, plenty of water. Food choices, this is another big one the day after when we're hungover or we've been drinking. It is very, very common for us to just say, ah, I'm hungover, it's fine, I'm just gonna kind of have a day, not track, not really care about what I eat. And this may lead to you feeling worse. So trying to pick foods that are in line with your goals, still focusing on your protein intake, getting lots of fresh fruit and veg in. Obviously indulge a little bit if you like to, but just staying mindful of this the next day is really important. And then movement, like I mentioned, getting out for even just a walk on the day that you are feeling a little bit fatigued, hungover, just get outside, get out for a little walk and stretch your legs and I assure you, you will feel a lot better for it. So moral of the story is, yes, you can incorporate alcohol, but it's gonna depend on how much you are drinking, if it is gonna have an impact on your fat loss or on your muscle building. So it is important to have a think about this. If you're not seeing progress with your fat loss or gaining muscle and you're going out two, three times every single week and drinking quite heavily, that is probably gonna be the lowest hanging fruit that you can make changes to, to make your choices more in line with your goals and help you to see that progress that you really want to see. If you have any questions at all, please get in touch with me or someone else on the team and we'll get back to you as soon as possible, but have a fantastic day and see you in the next one.